going back to uh, the US dollar. And so um, I've actually changed my uh, my bias to a potential auction range. So what I mean by that is normally I, I, mean, I either have a buy bias, a sell bias, uh, an auction range is basically where um, I look to either buy or sell. Now I can also break that down in terms of um, having an what I think the, you know price is going to do, but still have a certain bias. So with an auction range, when I whenever I have something like this, or say that my uh, where where I think it is in terms of uh, my bias, right? I think the, the currency can be a buy or a sell, right? In terms of sell at highs, buy at lows. If I'm thinking that you know it's more of a buy, then um, buy bias, and I'm expecting some sort of trend. Sell bias would be a, some sort of trend. I can also say, for example, auction range, but be more on the sell side, right? So although I'm not absolutely bearish on the currency, I am waiting for pullbacks just to look for sells. I'm not necessarily looking for any kind of buys, right? So um, at the moment. I do think now that something has shifted within the dollar, right? There's definitely been a shift within the dollar um, in terms of um, the uh, the their interest rates, and you're seeing that really play out with the uh, one second. Let me just mute Jamar. Um, you're seeing that play out with the Fed Watch tool, right? So with the Fed Watch tool, it's just um, a measure of uh, the probabilities in the market pricing for uh, interest rate cuts or hikes or halts. So right now we have a 100% chance of an ease at the moment. I don't know if you can see this at the top right hand side. Uh, I'll do it in red. So top right hand side is 100% chance of an ease, right? There's no chance of a hold at the moment. There's no chance of a hike. And so what we have at the moment, yeah, is the current yeah, and then we have 25 basis points, and then we have 50 basis points. So at the moment, there's a 34 chance, 34.7 percent chance of a 50 basis point uh, cut, uh, and then there is a the uh, 65 percent uh, chance of a 25 basis point cut. Yeah. So I, I was saying this, I've been saying this over the past uh, few weeks that the more uh, the 25 basis points is priced into the market, which, you know, this is increased over the past uh, couple of weeks, you can see it here. So a month ago, it was 44, there was a 44% chance, right? And then a week ago, it was 50% chance. And now it's pretty much 64, 65%. Yeah. So the deeper cut the 50 basis point cut is being priced out yeah it's being priced out of the market and so you have to remember that remember cuts mean or typically should devalue a currency so if the market is expecting less cuts yeah when at some point they were expecting more cuts so let's say for example a week ago it was pretty much 50 50 and now today we have you know, 34 or 35, 65, yeah? That means that less cuts are being priced into the market, meaning that actually the dollar should appreciate. Does everyone follow, by the way? Does everyone understand that logic? Why less cuts would appreciate the currency or the expectation of less cuts? Yep, 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 understand, excellent. And that's basically what's what's been happening right and so um that's why i've kind of shifted one of the reasons as well why i've shifted my bias because i've actually been um short on the dollar since uh probably maybe i think it's around july um we shifted our bias to you know all our cells and that's worked out nicely now um i'm thinking that the the, the dollar is going to be a um uh, you know, more more of an auction, not necessarily more of a sell. So you can look for buyers and sells. One of the you know the main reasons is this this Bloomberg article, and it's here where it says the Fed cut rates fifty basis points in September, uh, and we expect fifty basis point. No, actually, hold on, sorry, I meant to update this. I thought I updated it, didn't it save? One second. Oh, apologies. I thought that it would have saved, but it didn't. Uh, 
it's the last one I posted and um it is here right so I'll just zoom in a little bit more so that you can follow along so it says here the dollar is rallying this week as traders start to question how aggressive the Federal Reserve's interest rate cutting path will be compared to its global peers right that's key right because the comparison is what we're looking for when we're looking to trade pairs so around about you know uh, maybe about a couple of weeks ago it was expected that you know the fed cut by 50 basis points yeah and the expectation was that then at the next uh cut uh, you know, was going to be another 50 basis points and then, you know, maybe 25 basis points. Yeah. So in total this year, there was supposed to be 125 basis points worth of cuts. Now that's being priced out of the market. Yeah. And now that's 25. So now there are less cuts being priced in, right? So we've already got these cuts, basically. So now there's only, when you think about it, rather than potentially 75 basis points worth of cuts, now there's only potentially 50 basis points worth of cuts. So again, the cuts are being priced out of the market or the amount of, an, uh, of cuts are being priced out of the market. And so that, compared to its global peers, is what is driving the dollar at the moment because i'll get to the euro but i guess i have to mention the euro now um for anyone that's been you know watching the euro over the past couple of weeks you'll, you've seen that um now they're looking to cut rates in october right so october previously was off the table data's come out supporting 25 basis point rate cuts so the same thing is started in reverse i guess the market is starting to price in more rate cuts for the eurozone and less for the united states that's the reason why you're seeing the euro for example euro dollar go down over the past uh, week or so uh, paul says when you say cuts are being priced out the market uh, does that explain why the dollar has exactly that's exactly it paul yeah that's exactly what what it means right when 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 something is being priced in or out yeah um with, when, when it comes to cuts um you know it's it's a guess it's it's where the starting point is right so the expectation like i said was for 50 basis points uh at the next meeting but now it looks like you know it's going to be 25 so those cuts are being reduced whether you say priced out or whether they're being reduced um you know they're they're, they're being they're, the expectation is being taken out of the market right whereas now the market is priced in or pricing in the uh the, the 25 basis points from zero yeah does that make sense yep all right excellent so uh so with the dollar's strength over the past, um, you know, week or so, this is what's been happening. So it says, uh, we have been pointing uh, to how the US dollar was looking cheap and oversold, right? And that's another, um, I guess, narrative that traders don't really take into account is, is value. And I always talk about value and why something is cheap and why something is expensive, why something's a premium or a discount. And so you're seeing really the experts use this type of language as well, because price and value are two different things. They're not, they don't mean the same thing, right? Something can be, um, you know, just because price is going higher doesn't mean that it's, um, you know, expensive. It can go higher, right? It doesn't mean it is cheap. Uh, but the way we derive, you know, whether something's cheap or expensive is really through the data and fundamental analysis. It says, uh, we have been pointing to how the US dollar was looking cheap and oversold and was bound for a bounce higher as market attention shifts outside the US to the rest of the world, says Jayati, and I'm not, you know, not gonna butcher his name, a currency strategist at um, TD Securities. That seems to have been playing out in the US as stabilized while the rest of the world's data 
is moderating or slowly causing us to reevaluate the central bank trajectory in those economies, right? And so as an illustration, and I think it was um it was WJ who posted this um in the discussion room um as a link and uh, I, I said to him this is really really helpful uh, to explain really you know uh divergences and so this is at the moment this was you know up to date as of today uh rate cuts by the end of the year and so just from reading this last kind of sentence where they're talking about that uh, it's um the, the re-evaluation of central bank trajectory in these economies what they're kind of referring to is how much rate cuts are coming um and you know do they have to you know revalue or reevaluate um what's coming down uh, into the future right and so at the moment uh, this year there's 69 basis points worth of cuts and the ECB is you know they say 50 53 basis points worth of cuts right whereas previously there was a wider gap right between the two so that's being reduced that's being increased right and there's a 65 percent probability of a 25 basis point cut right and a 97 percent chance of a 25 basis point rate cut in upcoming meetings so the, the the divergence between the two is is narrowing and not just the fed and the ecb right remember you're if you're trading for example the um the dollar versus or the euro versus any other currency it's important to look at what is being priced in for that currency currently yeah and then you can make you know you can start to see which divergences are the biggest right so you start to look at for example the, the rba and many of you may know of course that i've been long on the australian dollar for a good few months right and so 16 basis points of cuts are likely to be priced in what's the most the rbnz right and so you look at the aussie new zealand and you start to see you know a trend higher over the past you know uh, month or so and so that's what we're really doing and also as well look towards 2025 and what the expectations are as well bank of canada right looking to cut a lot more remember cuts are devaluation right so the so if this does come true by the way it's not set in stone right this is what today's expectations are and the data yeah needs to support that right if the data doesn't support rate cuts right then that's going to change it's obviously going to be reduced right or it could actually increase depending on how good or how bad the data is right so but for now yeah we have to look at this and this is what the market is looking to price in so again looking at 2025 if this does become true and the data is to continues to support it in terms of you know inflation is coming down unemployment is going higher you know the economy is contracting yeah then why wouldn't this continue to be true if inflation starts to get sticky or go higher unemployment goes lower right and the economy you know starts to recover then obviously th that's not going to be um that's not that's not likely the rumor is not likely to be become a fact right and it needs to you know obviously be priced out of the market but as it stands we can actually see the divergences and, and again revalue and um uh the market is revaluing what is going on in terms of you know the, the data that's coming out of the us you know the, the ism data that came out today the employment data that came out um uh which is basically supporting in fact a soft landing meaning that the uh us economy isn't necessarily going into a, a deeper recession or a recession sooner right it might even avoid a recession um you know within the next 12 months recession, recessions are inevitable by inevitable by the way but it's just how it kind of feels and uh, when it comes but the point is is that the the market has to now revalue or reevaluate 
the dollar and what the Fed are doing in terms of potential rate cuts because of the data and the better than expected data in comparison to what the Bank of England are doing, the Bank of Canada are doing, and, and what are the RBA doing and what the RBNZ are doing in comparison to the SMB, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all really about rate expectations, yeah, and what the market is thinking, yeah. And and the money is made by buying the rumor, right? The rumor is where the money is made, not necessarily the fact. You don't we don't want to wait until you know the day of you know the announcement whether they're going to cut or whether they're going to hold, because ultimately the market would you know would have known this and it would have priced in that data anyway. So we have to be always be aware of what is going on and keep our finger on the pulse, right? And so. Um, with the US dollar and with the data that's come out, you know, recently and today and um, potentially tomorrow because tomorrow's non-farm payrolls, right? And if non-farm payrolls is, um, is, is a great number or a good number or an expected number and, and the data pretty much convinces the market that the Fed are likely to, you know, cut by 25 basis points and there's no need to cut by 50 basis points, then you're going to see again the dollar start to rally right the dollar this is the dollar index the equally weighted dollar index so we've really just pulled back a bit it's not you know don't try not to kind of get drawn into um you know uh, i guess sometimes the um uh, the narrative and the way that certain things are written you would think that the dollar was like you know flipping all the way up here or something it's really just a kind of a, a just a bit more of a pullback and uh, i guess it's maybe the speed that it's doing it at but Ultimately, the market is just pulling back um, and it's within, again, this type of uh, this auction here where you've got a range uh, developing, right? So this is seen as expensive for the dollar, right? Overall, this is seen as cheap for the dollar and all we are in is just this auction here until the data either proves that the dollar should be maybe, maybe potentially higher or if non-farm port non-farm payrolls comes out and it's terrible news or it's just okay news then of course we, just, we might just end up in this in this auction right here right but ultimately i do think that that is what is potentially going to happen hence the reason why i've got this you know auction stroke range um and where i think prices are going to go so um the dollar for me is 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 a buy or a sell but again i think tomorrow is definitely going to be um a um uh, should clar should clarify uh and, and give a bit more clarity as to you know any kind of direction if it does right so also he says here also supporting the dollar in recent sessions uh, is a sharp escalation of conflict in the Middle East after Iran fired um, roughly 200 ballistic missiles in at Israel on Tuesday following Israel's own strikes in Lebanon. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to retaliate. The greenback typically gains during periods of geopolitical stress as investors seek safety in assets. So the haven bid and simply the fact that the US economy is not in dire straits are both boosting the dollar today, right? So you've got safe haven and then, you know, there's no recession on the horizon, said Helen Given, a foreign exchange trader at Monex Incorporated. So um, for me, there are reasons to buy the dollar. There are reasons to sell the dollar. So you can do either at levels, right? Either at any of these levels. And of course, um, you know, for again, anyone who's new, um, I know you probably haven't gone through everything. Uh, there's a lot to go through, but uh I use the equally weighted uh, indexes, yeah, as as also as confluence, and so uh, for me, I want to see the uh, the dollar index. If I'm looking to buy the dollar or looking to sell the dollar, um, I'm looking for the same confluences as I would on um, on if I'm trading a currency pair. So I need to see it in a you know some sort of supply zone and then i want to also see 